Welcome to another edition of Telescope Man. Welcome to another edition of Telescope Man. You know, we get a lot of requests on astronomyforum.net about a push to go to Dob, like what you see behind me, which is an Orion XT10i. It's a 10 inch scope a reflector. And we get a lot of questions on the hand controller and the use of the hand controller. So, what I want to do today, I've already showed you in a previous video a little bit about some of the parts of the telescope, but today I want to show you this hand controller. Now let's get it right up here real close to this cam so you can kind of see it. Now notice there the keys are labeled. And it's pretty self-explanatory. The M is for Messier objects. NGC catalog is next. IC catalog. Then it's got a list of uh, certain nebulas and star clusters and galaxies and planets and stars. And even a place for user objects. So uh, pretty self-explanatory on what these buttons would do once the scope is aligned. So let me kind of show you that a little bit and we'll go through uh, a fake alignment a little bit inside the telescope man's little office here and we'll try to give you some idea how this works. Okay, so obviously the first thing we're going to do is turn the power on. And when it comes on, it gives you the version number of the firmware that's in this hand controller, the, our object locator. I have never seen an updated firmware come out of Orion yet, okay? It does have a port on the top, uh, and you need a special cable, which you can get from Orion to use for updating the firmware or for plugging in a laptop to this. But I have never seen any uh, newer firmware actually posted anywhere that you could update it. So I'm just going to say right off the bat, whatever it comes with, you're stuck with it, okay? So if it works, it works. And if you like it, you like it. Like the way it works. And if it doesn't work, then uh, not much you can do about it because there has never been a firmware update for this hand controller. So the first thing that's on the screen, let's see if I can get enough resolution for you to see that. I don't think so. I don't think you can quite read that. So let me read it to you. It says, uh, point, point, uh, point, the Intelescope vertically and then press enter. Okay, so what it's wanting you to do is just simply take the scope and point it straight up. Now this is the critical part of setting up this scope and that is that previously I have made sure that this scope is perfectly vertical using a bubble level on the top. Okay, and adjusting a little stop that's down here on the tube to make sure this scope is perfectly level. I've already done that already. So yes, it is level and I'm going to hit enter and it says thank you and then it goes to the next screen which is asking me to pick an alignment star by name. So Obviously, you're going to have to know a couple of stars in the sky, what their names are, and where they're located in order to use this uh, hand controller, push to uh, hand controller, all right? So, virtually all go-to scopes, except for the Mead LS, you're going to have to know a couple of stars in order to align the scope. So, I'm inside right now, hadn't even checked what's up and what's not. I do know that Vegas up, so 
I'm going to select Vega, which I just did. And obviously, I would have had to turn the scope to Vega. Okay, let's pretend that's Vega right there. And once I have it centered in my eyepiece on Vega, I would push enter. And it said thank you. And now it's asking me for the next alignment star. So let's pick uh, Arcturus. I know that's up. And okay, I've got Arct Arcturus now. And, you know, let's just say Arcturus is right about here in the sky and I press enter again and it says thank you and it gives me a warp factor and the bigger that number is uh, the worse off you are okay you want a very tiny warp factor point something point one point two you know if you're getting warp factors like 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 uh, scope's not going to find anything. You have to start all over again. Okay, so once I have done that, once I have done that, aligned it on two stars, preferably widely separated, and on one on each side of the meridian would be great, but just widely separated. Then I can select a target. So, Looking at my star chart, I know that M13 is up right now. So I will press the M button that you saw earlier and the number 013 because it's a three place little uh, display here. So you got to put the zero in there to get the 13. All right, and now it's telling me that I have to go so far this way, the arrow is pointing, it says uh, 39 this way and 3 this way. So, I would look at my screen and get this on to 0, okay, and then I would turn the scope and get the other arrow down to 0, which would be in this direction, if I can get it around this cabinet. And that's about right there, right about there. And if my first two alignment stars were properly centered, I should be right at M13 right now. I should be right at M13 and be able to see it at least in this finder scope if not in the eyepiece, okay? If it's, you know, if it's not in this finder scope, I probably need to go back and turn it off, pick two more stars, turn it back on again, you know, and just do the whole thing all over again until it's working properly. So, here's the steps. Again, you turn the scope on, First thing it's going to ask you is put it vertically. You put it vertical. Remember, very important that it really is vertical. You got to get a bubble level, put it up here, and adjust a little bolt that's at the bottom to make sure that tube is perfectly level on top. All right. Once you've done that, then it's you hit enter, it's going to say pick two, pick a star, pick your first star. You're going to pick it. You're going to move that scope to that star. Center it in the eyepiece. Okay. A lot of people simply really set up their finder scope perfectly with the main tube. And they actually center it in the finder scope crosshairs. And you can do that, too, if you've lined these up really, really uh, close to each other. So those crosshairs are the center of the eyepiece. You can use the finder scope instead of the main tube, okay? Give you a little bit better chance to see it, see those alignment stars, because you get a wider feel in this scope up here than you do in this scope, all right? Wider field of view. So once you get the first star, you hit enter. It'll ask you to pick a second one. 
you turn the scope to that star, press enter again, and you're going to get a number, and that number needs to be very, very low, point something, point one, point two. I would say once it got over about point seven or eight, you probably need to go back and try to recenter those same stars again, turn it off, uh, turn it back on again, and try to do those two stars. Now, there's a little trick to this, too. You know, if you have already know what your two stars are, okay, and let's say Vega's the first one, all right? So what you can do is you can go ahead, before you even turn it on, you can find Vega right in the eyepiece here, okay? Find it, center it. Turn your hand controller on, all right? It's going to say... Point me vertically. Now, remember now, we're pointed right at Vega right now, okay? Perfectly. So, I go, okay, and I do this and press enter. Then I pick Vega. Guess what? All I have to do is this. Lower the scope, and Vega is going to be right in the eyepiece at some point, okay? Because I've already centered it before I did anything before I actually even turned it on. All right, so I've got my first alignment star right off the bat. Then I'll pick my second one and, you know, have to turn it one way or the other to get that star in the scope. So that's really all there is to these little, uh, they abbreviate them COL. COL, that's how they abbreviate them. You might see us talking about a uh, COL, all right? That's basically a little computer uh, that you select two stars with, and then, you know, you can align your push-to, go-to scope, like this Intelliscope X-T10i, and it'll help you find objects in the sky. And this is very useful for beginners and for finding objects when there is some light pollution and there's really no way to star hop because you can't see enough stars to star hop. You can use something like this uh, to help you find those dim objects in the sky. The other advantage of it, of course, is there's no motors to worry about. Really no electronics other than this. If this ever breaks, you can buy another one this little controller from Orion and just you know plug it in it plugs in okay. plugs into here and you're off and running again so great way to do it is with a push to daub with an object locator like this all right and I encourage you if you're a beginner to take a look at these I think you're going to pay a premium of something like $149 to have this controller. And you can also order this scope with uh, ready to go. And all you need to do later is to order the encoders that are pieces of metal and discs in the bottom and the sides and some electronics. They sell it as a kit. And you can add it to the scope. But you must order the scope from Orion. Already ready to go for these upgrade kits. So make sure you do that. If you decide to buy one without this. I would certainly buy one that was ready to go. At some point. Send them $149 or whatever the kit is. And you can upgrade a manual type scope to a push to go to and the other thing i do want to bring your attention to because it's brought up all the time a lot of people say i sure don't like those springs on those orion scopes yes the classic orion dob uses a heavy duty spring down here to hold the tube but these in telescopes don't do that let me show you what they use they use a Teflon washer. 
on this knob. There it is right there, see? A little Teflon. And, of course, the more you tighten it, the tighter it holds the tube. All right? So, when you change eyepieces and the weight changes, really all you have need to do is slightly adjust this knob down here for the difference in the weight, and your scope's going to just stay just like it is right now and won't move around just because you put a big eyepiece on it. So these in telescopes have Teflon that they use to hold a tube. They do not have a spring, okay, like the classic Orion Dob. So with that said, like I always do, I wish you clear skies. And remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. See y'all later.